Welcome to the Farm Hop Life Men's Forum number three. Tonight we're talking about mental health. I am Matt DeRozier of a Farm Hop Life, and tonight I have with me Dylan Schnazy uh, of, oh man, Steady Presence Enterprises. You got it. You got it. <laughs> I'm, I added the enterprises because they've got a they've, they do a lot, uh, which we can we can plug. They have like a farm. She's uh, his wife's got a doula service and. Uh, holistic dietary nutrition something something <laughs> that's right so uh we'll, we'll we'll plug all that uh at the end so first let's go through a couple of current events now the one you picked was interesting libraries banning books now what made you uh think about this this current event yeah so um my wife found the article i i was trying to find it uh i couldn't find it just now but there's some there's some new banned books like i'm familiar with the traditional list of banned books like uh tom sawyer and i think even the like the catcher in the rye that's banned now still and or it's banned again or it's re I, think, I think still but it's funny because I read it when I was in high school. Same. And I'm glad that I read it. It, it was a good book. Okay, here I got the list. So there's 10 books that they want removed and then that librarians want removed and then uh, 10 social justice books that they would like. Oh, okay. So this little graphic ash is all the books? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so they have, uh, like she said, they have books that they want uh, removed. Um, oh, and then ten books about social justice. So I'll just kind of I'll, I'll name this list here. Sure. Uh, for for everyone, to kill a mockingbird, the Great Gatsby, the Catcher in the Rye, Lord of the Flies, Huckleberry Finn, Tom Sawyer, Great Expectations. Pride and Prejudice, Of Mice and Men, 1984. <laughs> I know, 1984. That one okay, got 19, me good. 1984 was interesting because they, they want that banned because they don't want anybody uh, thinking poorly of, of government. Does it have a reason next to each book? I think so. Ash, do they have a reason by each book? Um, or maybe if you just no, read down. No, it was just general reasons. And then okay. I, That's and super funny. It promotes <laughs> the idea that government overreach is problematic. Yeah. Promotes That's the idea that overreach. government overreach is problematic. Oh man, that's like <laughs> that reads like satire, man. Like that's yeah, so, that's hilarious. And that's ironic because I don't know. I guess that's kind of the point of the book, right? Um, let's your see what other ration ones. citizen. Uh, oh, oh yeah, and then okay, Little House of the, on the Prairie. So th this is the one. <laughs> this is the one that Ash and I were talking about. I've I, I've never read it. Have you read it, Ash? Yeah. Okay. So apparently they talk about Native Americans in the book. Hmm. Not not in a flattering light. Uh, as okay. Ash points out, but isn't the point of history f for us to you're supposed to capture history how it happened and then use it as a time capsule for now to talk about what was wrong with history back then. Yeah, it's like a teachable moment, not so much like. Um... Hey, we this this is not how we think anymore. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not a it's not an instruction booklet on on how to be cruel to Native Americans. Like, <laughs> right? That's that's not what it's that's not what it's supposed to be for when you're reading it. Right? Yeah, it's, it's not a like a, just like 
uh, I mentioned this a while ago on uh, a different podcast, but it's like when they go to um, ban Mein Kampf, uh, the people that actually buy Mein Kampf are historians that yeah. study Hitler. <laughs> it's not yeah, yeah. Nazi wannabes and whatever. It's people that actually are like studying uh uh, the the mind of Hitler essentially when he wrote it all pissed off or however it was. But yeah, yeah. It's pretty. Like, it's pretty uh, funny. Uh, Nicole Sauce uh, read it last year. Oh, did she? And she did. Yeah. And I, I, it's a good, it's a good idea to understand what people were thinking in history, and what better way to understand what they were thinking than to read their actual works. Right. Yeah. So that that we can then see what they were doing and notice a pattern with current leaders. Sure. Is Absolutely. there any correlation here? What are we seeing? And if we see that, we got to take steps to mitigate that. Yeah. Instead of like, you know, so and so holding up a book I'm like this is bad and be like everyone's like okay <laughs> and you can actually like read it for yourself and understand like like and make your own uh make your own assumptions but that's right that actually uh that actually ties in pretty good to the next current event that i wanted to cover was the ministry of truth as it's as it's being uh described now now the U.S. government doesn't actually—they don't—they're not calling it the Ministry of Truth. They're co calling it the, oh crap, the Disinformation Governance Board to tackle spread of misinformation in U.S. focusing on Russia and U.S.-Mexico borders from from CBS News. So wow. uh, it's it's hilarious. So like the memes have already been going around. Like Hitler had a Ministry of Truth. Um, uh, Stalin had a ministry of truth. Mussolini's probably in there. I don't know, whatever, whatever, and blah, blah, blah. Joe Biden has a ministry of truth. So, like, it's it's funny. Uh, it's just funny that, it that they get to decide what is disinformation. Now, I heard, heard an explanation today that um, – so there's misinformation, which is just – obviously, the information is not correct – Apparently, disinformation is false information with the intent to deceive. So, so they're they're deciding the person's one, the person's truth, and two, the person's intent. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that is a sleight of hand. The definitions miss versus disinformation mm -hmm. i mean that's that's with a lot of things uh what is it uh you can to sell a lie uh you could say 90 percent. there's 90 percent truth there and then fit in 10 percent uh of the lie right and that's 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 like with the word disinformation yeah uh, and and in this case, it's all in the eye of the beholder of what that information is and what obviously they're going to put have a put a bad light on information that is counter to their beliefs or counter to the way that people should believe. Yes. Um, yeah. It's like the uh, old adage, just to say it like another way, you know, half truths make the best lies or whatever. Yep. Yeah. And I don't know if this quote has uh, something to do with this, but I, I heard this from, from Jack that Winston Churchill said, uh, what is it? A lie spreads around the world faster than the truth has time to put its pants on. That sounds that sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I so I haven't really been watching the news lately, and it's been 
<laughs> it's been great for my mental health. <laughs> I actually put that in my notes. Yeah, same. Yeah, tying into our uh, next topic. But uh, I got one more thing before we get the main topic. Oh, no, definitely. Uh, if you are if you have more on the uh, disinformation government's bo- governance board. No, I, I'll, I'll let that one go. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so my wife says barf. <laughs> barf. Uh, from the New York Post today, heroic ghost of Kiev fighter doesn't actually exist, Ukraine admits. Now, I saw this trending on Twitter this morning, and... I thought, I thought, thought that was like already proven that the ghost of Kiev like didn't actually uh, didn't actually exist. That it was just propaganda. Like I thought everyone knew that like a month ago, but maybe the news is that Ukraine admits it, or the news is just catching up with. I don't know. I don't know. But again, you know, everyone there was just kind of like this thing that people bought into at the beginning of like the Ukrainian war. I guess like. You know, oh, the ghost of Kiev, shut down six, whatever, whatever's like it has a the ghost of Kiev has a uh, Wikipedia page. Uh, So right here it says uh, it was like updated like 42 minutes ago. The ghost of Kiev uh, is the nickname given to a fictitious MiG-29 fulcrum flying ace credited with shooting down six Russian planes over Kiev during the Kiev offensive on 24th of February 2022. So. Did they just now get around to the fictitious part, or I don't, I don't know. Okay, so this is my first time hearing about this. Like I said, I really don't watch the news anymore, and to me, this whole conflict is very analogous with World War One, and this story that you just described kind of fits in with the World War I playbook where there there was not a lot of reason why the U.S. should have entered World War I. And in fact, for multiple years, we had stayed out of it. I don't believe we went into World War I until 1917, so about four years after the war started. And so I was listening to a podcast, I think it was last year, and they were describing 10 different articles from, let's say, English papers about either stories that never happened or stories that were so taken out of context to, uh, to drag the American people in, into that war. And so it's it, this... This story is so analogous to that era of history that it kind of surprises me that people are falling for it. There's a whole Wikipedia article. I know blah, 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 Wikipedia sucks, but propaganda in World War I. And then history.com, how the U.S. government used propaganda to sell Americans in World War I from csmonitor.com. From mm-hmm. nationalism to fake news, legacies of World War One that's still still relevant. And then on reporter dot blah blah blah, whatever war, propaganda and misinformation, the evolution of fake news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh I mean and then World War Two, they would set up basically movie scenes using German filming crews where they would set up like blown up towns, barbed wire, they would stage it all. And then back then they, the only way they watched the news was at the first 15 minutes of watching a film at the theater. And that's how Hmm. they got their news. And they would show these films of this uh, brutality, but it's all fake and say that uh, the Jews are responsible for it. And, (laughs) And so, <laughs> sorry, we're, that sounds ridiculous, but it, it actually happens. I yes, I I believe. Uh, what is it? I, I remember all these people's names, but it's slipping now. Uh, 
Re Lenny or Remy, the the main filmmaker for German propaganda, uh, coordinated this. Oh, well, I okay. think in the like mid thirties. It was the same person that uh, filmed all the uh, demonstration, the like Nazi demonstrations, mm. uh, and uh, yeah, made more propaganda out of it. Oh, but speaking of propaganda, I saw something on Float, and it showed a uh, Ukrainian city, and cars flipped over, and uh, like what had looked like uh, like a bomb went off. But all, all of the windows were still intact. And they said, hey, give me the number for this uh, Ukrainian window company. They, they, <laughs> they look like a great, uh, great place to do business with. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I was trying to look up the uh, CIA project uh, that infiltrated like Hollywood, where it, uh, I think it was... Uh, project mockingbird or whatever where you know um the cia basically controlled the narrative of whatever hollywood did so i think that was it i don't remember yeah it sounds about like the like 1950s and uh how they yeah. filmed like the twilight zone and various movies oh and uh what is it the the blob i think that or the the body snatchers that was supposed to be about communism Oh really? I see. I saw little clips of that uh, invasion of the body snatchers sometime last year, and it is a weird, weird movie. It is super yeah, it, weird. Yeah, those nineteen fifties movies are strange because the yeah the effects, not the effects, but the uh, the filmography is so clean. It's black and white, but it's yeah. very clean. And then all the people speak in a very clean manner. So it, it almost it almost reads li like propaganda, right? It's very conformist. Uh, everyone's right. taught the same. Strange. It's strange. <laughs> um, so let's move into the main topic: mental health. And my my first note. Um, well, first, meant to. To promote like your own mental health, there could be like a lot of things. And in my, you know, the notes I sent out to everybody could be from, you know, prayer, meditation, working out, martial arts, food, alcohol, drugs, um, social media, even. So the uh, could my note is no news is good news. Where that, yes. I don't watch the news either. I just get like these stupid little headlines that show up every now and then, and I was like. Hmm, that sounds like BS. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Off I go. Back to what I was doing. What about you? Yeah, I uh, <clears throat> I haven't been watching the news regularly. I I mean, I I, I don't watch like broadcast news. We we don't mm -hmm. we don't have cable, but uh, like in 2020, I would go to like Google news and just like, Oh, I just, I just need to see a peek of what's happening. I get, a, I need to get a flavor and I, I don't need to get a flavor of what's happening anymore. I, right. I'll hear about it. If, if, if you need to know about it, you're, you're, you'll hear about it. Right. Um, <clears throat> and, and our mental health has been great for it. We just focus on like the farm, the farm dance that we're doing this Friday. Yeah. We're, spending so much time on that activity that you put in to your life so much good and it literally pushes out the negativity because there's no time for it. There's no room exactly. for it. Exactly. I, I don't I can't even think about it because I'm thinking about what are we gonna eat at the farm dance? What songs are we going to play? What songs have I put on my play with, playlist that are going to embarrass my wife? So we have to go through that and comb out all of the ACDC and Chuck Berry that she doesn't want to listen to. 
What songs um, am I going to sing for karaoke? How much do I need to be drinking before karaoke so I get that right amount of buzz to not slur all my words, but have the courage enough to be able to sing this song and hit those high notes? <laughs> and for me, it's probably one. <laughs> <laughs> you call yourself a Wisconsinite? Wisconsinian? I, what are we? Wisconsinites? Yeah, and... Um, <laughs> I'm a poor one. <laughs> I'm a poor one. <laughs> That's fair. Um, yeah, I do have. I, we can we can elaborate uh, a little bit further, but I do have a couple comments to read, and we can we can comment on the comments, I guess. Sure. So the first comment from an anonymous uh, member of our men's forum who has yet to make an appearance. So he goes. This is what he said. My biggest issue is the balance. Uh, sorry, my biggest issue is the balance with the work from home job averages twelve plus hours a day, farm work, family, and leisure. I have to be careful not to put too much pressure on myself with the farm. My vision outpaces my time and money. I can yeah. feel, I can feel really disillusioned when I don't get the farm stuff done on time and well. I have to fight that. My religious practice is important to me. I need to feel useful and I enjoy serving in my church. Working out helps me as well. So he, he touches on a lot of points there. First point being, um, you know, not to get overly ambitious on his, on his farm that, mm -hmm. you know, he has to, you know, kind of rein it in, like, I've got these grand visions, but given my job and my time commitment to my family and, you know, having time to, you know, just relax with the family as well, go on vacations or whatnot, um, I really have to dial that back, kind of, kind of, let's be real about what we're, what we're able to achieve in the time that we do have on the farm. Yeah. Uh, first, I'm going to say I'm going to challenge this individual to, to come on to the men's forum because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm making it a priority to, to attend these forums uh, so that, th I mean, this is, this is part of my mental health. Talking with other guys that are in, in my same position, working a job, running a homestead, this, I need an outlet for this. This Sure. This is what I needed during 2020 when I was seeing the world that I had knew kind of break apart and I felt very exposed. I needed a group of men that I could talk to. Sure. And I guess this leads me into my next story. Uh, this this is about my, my cousin-in-law. Uh, this is a pretty deep uh, topic. Okay. Uh, I believe this is the right time to talk about it. Okay. Um, so my my cousin-in-law, and I, I didn't know any of this because we had kind of lost touch with family uh, during 2020 and 21. And from reading, reading his Facebook posts, he was probably going through the same kind of stuff that I was but didn't have, you know, members of the freedom community talking about the topics. Like I, I felt, I felt that I, I was able to, it was good. It was comforting to know that other people were thinking the same thing that I was, but he didn't have that. So he was, he was thinking about threats from China, threats from making certain health choices that he didn't feel comfortable with. And this was taking a toll on his mental health. In, in February, he had a mental breakdown and he was brought into a mental um, health facility. And it's a, it's a shame because all they can do is basically from my understanding, they basically gave him some drugs to calm down and have a few nights stay. Then his insurance expired for funding and they let him out. 
that is that is not how you solve a mental health crisis. And I understand there probably wasn't the resources to properly take care of it, but uh, that's that's the system that we have. So a couple of days after that, uh, he he had another mental breakdown, and uh, police were involved, and uh, <clears throat> his uh, friend was brought in to kind of take the situation down a level, but. His, so his friend showed up to his house where my, my cousin-in-law was uh, like he took his wife's phone and threw it against the wall and uh, kind of destroying property and stuff. So his friend his friend went in there, tried to calm him down, br bring him out of the house, and they, they took a drive. And the whole plan all along was to arrest or to pull the car over so that they can help my, my cousin-in-law well, my cousin-in-law got out of the car and he was shot to death and this can all be i bring this up as a learning opportunity because it doesn't have to be this way we need men talking with other men because women, they they have, I, I don't mean to sound sexist, but they have sewing groups. They get together for scrapbooking. They go on play dates with other moms. But men, men go to work. And in, in this case, my cousin-in-law, he went to work in a steel mill. He owned his own business. He was tied up in keeping up with the Joneses. And it cost him his life. So men, men need to start talking with other men. And that, that takes building community. And that's what we're trying to do here on this farm is bring families together, bring men together to, to get it out, out in the open. What, what is causing you pain? Because men don't talk about this. Mm -mm. We don't talk about it. We It stays pent up inside of us. And we got to get it out on the open. We got to put it out on the table. And we have to deal with it. Agreed. That is a little bit of why I wanted to start this. Was just like, um, just so, you know, guys that I've already talked to, um, and future ones down the road that they're welcome to come on in and we can chat about whatever we want to talk about. Now it should also be said that I encourage my wife, Katie and all the women that I've interviewed so far and in the future, they can also have their own thing, but that's, that's up to them. I'm not going to start it for them. I just right. encourage that they do their own thing. It doesn't have to be anything like this. It doesn't even have to be recorded if they don't want. Like that's however they want to want to do it. They can do it, but there needs to be more um, open communication between between guys. Absolutely, and um, like so we don't have mental breakdowns, and so uh, we can even if you're probably fifteen hundred miles away from me, we mm. can still talk about stuff, yeah. right? And so like, Hey, like I'm really struggling on this or whatever. And, you know, we've had these chats for the last couple of weeks. You know, I feel like I can really talk to you. Um, what do you like? I just need someone to hear me out on this. Like another, let's say like another dad or yep. another husband or whatever, like, so that, that type of, that type of support. So I, um, thanks for sharing that story. That's yeah. Yeah, we we've Hard been to wanting to about. yeah, yeah we've been wanting to to share that so people know people need to know it that there's we can't we can't, we can't. real consequences to 
not taking care of your mental health. It's not just like, I mean, not to downplay depression because that can have its own, um, I guess, life altering consequences, uh, to put it mildly, I suppose. But, you know, there is also other, other avenues to the same fate, unfortunately. So these things that we gotta, we gotta talk about these things. Yeah. Um, so it, I guess to return to the, uh, the, uh, the viewer's question about, you know, dealing with a homestead and, and job, uh, I would say, I would say number one is you have to do what you have to do to keep the job because that's, that's what's keeping you on the land to begin with. Mm -hmm. And this might actually be the individual that uh, had the question, but the, the previous interview that you had with, uh, with the Wilson homestead. Yeah. She put out a store, uh, a reel. that was really powerful. It was talking about how, when you are self doubting yourself, that other people are looking up to you for strength. I did see that one. Yeah. And I, that I, not a lot of reels catch my attention, but I'm going to, I'm going to remember that one because we deal with self doubt. Like, mm -hmm. like we're not like, we're not doing enough or oh, yeah. I'm an imposter. Uh, who am I to own a business? But uh, people under us are, are, are looking up to us and that, that keeps us going forward. Yeah. Um, I was just on uh, Brian's po uh, podcast, the, uh, the lots project. And yeah. I had like, super intense, like imposter syndrome. Like I haven't even done anything yet. Like <laughs> I'm just, I have a plan and it's being executed. I'm in the process of it, but for the time being, I'm still in my house. Like I haven't left this place. And so, you know, but to, to, for somebody to like hear whatever I had to say, be like, wow, that's, awesome that he's doing that um i'm gonna i'm gonna start trying to figure out my thing or whatever maybe i don't know um, yeah i mean for you to be for you to be on his podcast and now other people that were maybe on the fence about doing something similar to you or even if one person now takes the step and say hey i'm gonna i'm gonna do what matt does uh that that's a, that's a step in the right direction. Yeah. Or like I found Brian's podcast and he's going to go live in an RV and I'm going to, I'm basically, I told him, I'm like, I'm just following what you're doing. So uh, like uh, he goes, if one person, you know, does what I'm doing or follows what I'm doing and can take something from it, he goes, I'm happy. And I'm like, that's me. I'm that's me. That. <laughs> you got one. So um so yeah what uh what about a couple of the other points that he brought up um like like work i think he's at the end he said working out helps me as well so do you do you work out did you go to the gym do you currently go to the gym yeah so um in high school i was a power lifter oh uh, that's why you did uh, mention that yeah yeah in uh it's, it's funny in elementary school i was a uh I don't know, uh, string bean. <laughs> and then my uh, uncle introduced me to weightlifting and I had not been the athletic type in my family and powerlifting was a great outlet for me sure. for doing something athletic that I was talented in. However, now that I understand permaculture, I am I noticed that, or I noticed this in college that lifting for me was segregating an, an activity out of my life. I had to make time away from my wife, family, and at the time, girlfriend to, yeah. to lift weights, which looking back on it now, uh, I would say it was selfish. It's, 
not not that selfish is a bad thing, but it was self-centered. That's the definition of selfish. Right. Because so, it took three hours. Oh, because it took three hours. <laughs> she chimes yeah, I mean, in. <laughs> this isn't an hour at the gym. Yeah. It took three hours. My 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 workouts were lengthy. <laughs> anyway, I okay I'm... to to interrupt you just for a second. I have heard that if someone someone say one time, like if you're spending more than an hour at the gym, what are you doing with all your time? Like I can put in a good sweat in forty five minutes. <laughs> oh yeah, so. <clears throat> Lifting as a power lifter, you go to do, let's say, three reps, and then you take that because those take so much out of you, you sure. take a three minute break. And if you're at the gym, you maybe get to talking with someone, and that turns into 15 minutes. <laughs> but sure. uh, now, <clears throat> now that I'm on the homestead, I, I don't work out. I, I'm going to be getting my, the uncle that got me into powerlifting. Yeah. Up. I mean, he has a weight, he, he has his weight set from when he lifted in the 1950s that I'm going to be getting, um, to bring to the farm. It's like but straight I don't, red. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> he, he had spray painted them all red to look, uh, I don't know, badass, but, uh, <laughs> uh with the homestead, I don't I don't work out in the summer. I I am out of energy just doing just doing the farm chores. Yeah. And I noticed in 2020 we we did a lot of walking. We walked uh, to the park. We walked to uh, this uh, local garden uh, next to us. But that was also not uh, integrating exercise and walking into your life it was okay i'm going to take time away from let's say gardening to walk the kids to a park so it was segregating that activity out uh so <clears throat> i get I, I i get all my activity done on the homestead uh because i am integrating my exercise in with doing what's needed on the homestead right um, yeah. but i probably will try to lift during the winter especially if it um interests my son um because then then i'm integrating exercise with time with my son so that makes <clears throat> sense yeah um what about um what about religion do you guys go to church okay so we this is a uh this is an interesting topic because we're we at least I come from um, a household that, and now mom and dad, if you're watching, uh, all the best. <laughs> um, but religion to us was more, you go and you do the things, but within your day-to-day -day life, he's not a part, God isn't a part of you. And so, like, my son has more religion or more, more faith than, than, than I did for, let's say, 25 years of my life. Because okay. he, can, he can pray to God, and he can tell God a joke during his prayer. Because we tell, we tell him that God is your friend, and friends tell jokes to each other. Um, so I like that, yeah, so we're in the process of finding your kid um, has great mental health. Just if you can tell God <laughs> a joke, he's got a plus mental health. Uh, yes, our, our son is, uh, something special. He, both of them, both of them. um, their, their mental health is good now. And we are building a foundation where they're, they're going to have beautiful mental health um, in the future. Um, but going back to religion, so we were, we were just at a church uh, this last week. And um, we, need, we need a special place for us to fit in. Um, I don't know, Ash, can you chime in? Yeah. 
Um, this is the men's forum. <laughs> <laughs> no girls allowed. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, clearly I wasn't planning on doing this because I think I'm wearing exactly the same thing as the last time I was here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we went to a larger um, uh, non-denominational church this weekend because we are trying to find a home church space that works um for us first of all on a sensory level because um me and teddy specifically um have a harder time with um really loud noise and um a lot of things going on around us and specifically a lot of um emotions going on around us that that they can pick up on what other people are feeling okay. just by looking at their face okay um and so if we're at church for an hour and a half in the morning if it's not the right fit for ted and i then we're like shot for the rest of the day because we've done like all of this preparation to... and like emotional work to like keep ourselves regulated. And I hate hmm. using the buzzword of empath because oh, I'm an empath and it's like, okay, whatever. Like I cringe when I hear the word empath, but that's the only thing that I can, um, we're highly sensitive people. So anyway, Sure. From a sensory level, that's like one of the things that we have to um, find, find the right fit. Find it in a religious institution. Yeah. And then um, we, so our kids are with us all the time because we homeschool. So the whole mm -hmm. like, yeah, you just put them into Sunday school and then you come pick them up. Like that is not a comfortable thing for any of us. Um that's this fair. Church, yeah, it's just, uh, it's not like we're overly attached to each other or that if um, the boys had to go somewhere without us that they couldn't do that because they go lots of places without us to trusted individuals in our life and not to total strangers in a large brand new place. Um, right. I've been in like childcare and in education my whole life uh up through college and i know um the feeling as a caregiver to not know everybody's name in your care and if you don't know everybody's name in your care then how do you know that they're all there you you count a lot and you hope for the best but like i know the inner workings <laughs> like honest to like yeah, seriously i get it you are always doing your numbers and that's not me being like an overly protective psycho parent because if you're sending your kids to school then their teachers know who they are and their teachers know where everyone is because that's something that they do all day every day um so they gave us a tour through the sunday school and me and dylan just had like the just not the right fit vibes for us like at all yeah, you and, can pick up on it pretty quick. Like, mm, yeah, no, not it's feeling not, it. It's not working out. So then we got to the like, okay, and then if your child learned their Bible verses, then they get to pick um, prizes out of these buckets. And there's like Twizzlers and all kinds of stuff that we wouldn't eat. And then a bunch of plastic junk that we don't really want in our house. And we don't really do rewards anyway because, and it's been working out fabulously with Ted because does he like comply with every single thing that we ask him or like tell him to do? Uh, no, not necessarily, but he's very intrinsically motivated as a five-year-old. Sure. Um, you don't need to bribe him to get him to do stuff. No. No. Right. And he and he follows his own curiosity. So do you want to learn more about that? OK, yes, let's learn more about that. Um, and me and Dylan both had flashbacks to when we went to Sunday school. Um, 
I was an anxious wreck as like a seven year old thinking, okay, am I going to remember all my verses so that I can get my tickets to go into that prize bin? Because I really want the yo-yo that lights up and blah, blah, blah. Right. So, um, I'm going to be the only kid without a toy. Cause I didn't remember my verses and it's just like school on yeah. Sunday. You call it yeah. Sunday school and it's yeah. like, Oh wow. This is just as bad as regular school, right? Except it's it, thankfully it's only an hour or two. And it's a whole different group of kids that I could get to embarrass myself in front of. Yeah. 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 In this classroom, the boys couldn't be together. They're five and three. So they were in different, would have been in different classrooms. And there were like 30 kids in Vinny's classroom and 40 some in Ted's classroom. And they like. That's a lot of kids. Holy smokes. I was thinking like a dozen. No, it was a lot of kids. And I, um, we had gotten. Uh, our friend was like, yeah, we go to this church and I really resonate with that friend's uh, beliefs and everything. And um, so I was like, yeah, I think we should just try it. Like we're going for the last two years. All we've done is like step violently out of our comfort zone and just Mm. see what happens. So like, let's just go out of our comfort zone because it has like, paid off in so many other things. Let's go Mm -hmm. try this. But I didn't realize it's like the gigantic church that you can see off the highway. And Um, they have like three jumbotrons so people can see from all the way in the back. Yeah, I got you. It's a full auditorium of- I'm always, like I'm I'm really torn about going to like friends' churches for like two, like, Oh, shoot. I lost the other reason. I was going to say two reasons. One, one, I, w- I think I might like it. Okay. I want to try it. But if other reason that holds me back is if I don't like it, are they going to be insulted that I don't like their church? I don't Correct. like them. So it's like I, I'm just stuck not going. Like, yeah. which is, which is too bad because I do feel out like I'm missing out on a potential community to be a part of. So. Yes to boost my mental health. Yep. Yeah. And that's why we are trying to seek out that space. But in the end, we kind of feel like we don't fit well with most of society. So like, (laughs) we don't, other than I pick my groceries up, I don't even go in the grocery store anymore because I don't want to deal with people that I haven't handpicked to be a part of my life. Like, Hmm. People are cranky, like just keyed up about stuff all the time. You can be in the grocery store and people be like, oh, yeah, that Biden. And I'm like, I didn't ask you for anything. I did not ask for this interaction. Right. I don't care about your opinion about this. People are mean on the road. Like, I don't know if it's just around here. Or it's the entire vibe of the United States. But everybody is like just jacked up and mean. And. So then we get this exposure to like the general public at a church. And I'm like, we just don't uh, fit really well here. Yeah. So I, one of the ideas that we um, gathered <clears throat> from Sunday, so like we always, whenever we go into an experience that makes us feel uncomfortable, we kind of brainstorm how, how we could make it work for us. And one thing that we kind of talked about was what if we with the few individuals that we resonate with, why don't we just do like a Bible talk on Sunday um, at our place and kind of, you know, make it work for us. Sure. Do your own thing. Uh, Yeah. I gotcha. Yeah. How many of our own things do we have time to do yeah, Let's talk about <laughs> mental health about that. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I'm Does glad that... you brought that up because I have two more comments that I want to read because we're coming up uh, close to an hour here. Um, the first one is from Tenzin. He was on the show and he was on the first men's forum. Uh, he's from Red Door Family Farm out in Wisconsin. Oh, he I said, uh, I found that limiting the scope of my expectations for myself, dropping some less lucrative enterprises, investing in better equipment, 
more slash better labor really freed up some time and attention span for me to do a better job of my main priorities, which helped me feel like I was succeeding in being more productive. It helped me make efficient uh, improvements as well, efficiency improvements as well, that have allowed me more time with my family and for fishing. <laughs> fishing, mental health, hunting, mental health, um, squirrel hunting, mental health. Uh, it's also... Also, it's allowed me to be more involved with a local food pantry that I'm on the board of. It's been a great step in the right direction. I hope to continue to apply this technique to more aspects of the farm. It is not easy, and unfortunately, it takes extra time and effort to get it going. I think letting go of unproductive slash unprofitable enterprises is the first necessary step to get that time back before you can invest the time and energy into the remaining higher priorities perfectly said yeah right now this year we're doing the uh, tim the tool man cook method of uh throwing every all the spaghetti on the wall yeah to see what sticks right um so we have uh we have our main business of doula nutrition services uh then we have farm events uh camp outs movie nights dance i don't know if i said that uh mom's groups and we're selling ramp salt we have the airbnb rooms we have all these enterprises that we are building up and during this winter we're going to be able to see which ones aren't making us the money we want and it's going to that's going to be interesting to see mm -hmm. what we can drop um yeah like you said you have to you have to drop the unprofitable right ventures because i mean it i mean it just makes a good business sense uh, right good business decision um so it just reminded me i when i interviewed tenzin and his wife stacy they said one of the things that they tried was they did like a community dinner or something like that they, they had like a dozen or so people um, come and like eat the food from their farm. And I think they brought in like a couple other uh, places, like food from other like surrounding areas as well, because mm -hmm. they're a vegetable farm. They don't have meat. So I think they brought in meat from like another farm sure. and uh, everybody loved it so much. They're like, we should do this like once a month. And, and, and then they said, thankfully, COVID happened because it was so much work to yeah. get that all organized and prepared and whatnot that uh, they're actually kind of glad that it that it that it kind of fell through, and it wasn't they didn't have to make that call of canceling it. Right. That's that's the balance that we have to play with our farm events is mm -hmm. giving enough value that people think it's worth it to attend, but not so much taking um, out of our cups to provide it. Right. So we're, we planned our events very strategically that they would be things we would want to do with our kids anyway, but just invite a lot of their friends to do it. Sure. And have them pay. Sure. So it, again uh permaculture integration we're integrating our kids activities into profitable farm ventures and i i, I hope that uh that it's uh worth it at the end of the summer um one more comment here uh from from a guy on twitter that i follow i think he follows me back i don't know uh it's Zachary, but is it's at Z G X R D. Don't know what that means, but okay. uh, so he just wrote busy becoming the best version of myself physically, mentally, and spiritually life is good. And I said, what do you do to support your own mental health? And he said, read the Bible, spend a lot of time outdoors and in the sun, reduce screen time, eat real food, maintain a positive mindset etc and so i said i'm going to mention this on tonight's episode can i give you credit he said sure so one thing that i forgot to put in my notes was uh well i think i wrote down food but i'd never elaborated on it 
Um, uh, I listened to the Weston A. Price uh, Foundation podcast. Um, oh, crap. What is it called now? Wise Traditions. And they did like a whole 10, 12 part series on mental health. And I think the one of them that I listened to was food. And if you like by eating the right foods in the morning, you um, you set the stage for the rest of your day mentally. Like it, like the food that you eat in the morning affects like your mental health. Mm-hmm. And so like, you know, if you've got, like I made, what's also funny is it, isn't it just, it's not just for me anyways, it's not just the food and eating the food. Uh, Sunday morning, I get up, have my coffee um, in, you know, do a little bit of work for the podcast and stuff. And then, and then I get my son up and we make breakfast. Sometimes it's waffles, which I, you know, eh, I'll eat waffles every once in a while. But last Sunday we made a venison breakfast sausage with cheesy eggs, just made like a big old pile. Like just, I, I think I used a whole dozen eggs and it was like a two pound thing of uh, breakfast sausage and just tons of cheese. It was awesome. And so like making that with my son, great for my mental health, just the act of making it and knowing like the eggs came from here. I shot this deer, no idea where the cheese came from, but, uh, yeah, yeah. but I know this is going to be a great nutritious meal for like to share with my family and that was just like that did wonders i liked it i liked just doing it yeah that's the one aspect that's kind of been stripped out of our food for the last uh, 50 to 70 years is the procurement of the food yeah the cooking of the food and then the sharing of the food with family and friends it's been completely stripped away um and like you said preparing food with kids it's first of all it's teaching a skill that they're gonna take with them for the rest of their lives like i i didn't really cook a lot with uh with my family but i remember i used to vacation out to new jersey with my aunt and uncle and when when i found a bottle of olive oil i i had never used olive oil before but i used that in my eggs and i can remember the flavor of the olive oil when when i cooked the eggs with my aunt Mm -hmm. and like like that memory uh sticks with me uh and then for my son to be able to have those memories going forward of hey we we cooked the first quail from his, from his quail. Right. And he, I put it on the pan and he took the tongs and flipped it. And, you know, I'm going to have that memory. It was fun making the meal. It was fun Mm -hmm. stripping the bird of meat and uh, giving that to him. Uh, And then, then I even uh, gave him a leg and uh, he ate it like a, you know, little carnivore. Perfect. (laughs) That's awesome. I, Uh, when you were telling me, uh, I, it reminded me of the little event that happened when I was uh, making breakfast with Milo. He, so we mix up, we mix up the dozen eggs because I just do it scrambled. It's just too easy. I'm not mm-hmm. doing sunny side blah, blah blah. Like, no, just scrambled. So we got this bowl of just scrambled, you know, just beaten eggs essentially. And so I turned my back to go. I don't know do the do like get the next part prepped and i just hear him laughing and like hitting stuff and i'm like so i turn around here he is he's got his hands in the bowl of raw egg just slapping egg going ha 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 and then he's like he's got egg all over his hand just wipes it on his shirt (laughs) i wasn't terribly happy about it then but it's funny now and it's not like i like scolded him or whatever i'm like milo no now we gotta wash your hands but at the like i kind of caught myself after i did it i was like whatever you were gonna have to wash his hands anyway so what's the matter yeah cooking with kids is uh it's like a it's almost like a dance where 
if there if there isn't something you know pressing at the moment you're taking big deep breaths for when something will happen sure because it will and so then it's like managing your expectations and managing yourself so that when something does happen that you don't erupt on this kid that's trying to learn how to cook right <laughs> yeah i just got him comfortable with cracking eggs after not like he dropped an egg once and he still talks about it like <laughs> he like we didn't even make a big deal about it like i like he held this egg and he dropped it on the floor and it broke on the rug like that we you know that's in front of the sink and we're just like okay that's fine you know we'll just have to clean it up and now every time he just points to the rug and goes egg <laughs> but um yeah is there anything that you wanted to wrap up on we we just hit an hour no i think i think we covered it um yeah go ahead Oh yeah, let's talk about that. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Did you hear all that? Uh, a little bit. Yeah. Okay, that your gut microbe is responsible for creating neurotransmitters. It produces and interacts with neurotransmitters. Okay, produces and interacts with neurotransmitters. So your 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 gut microbiome, which <laughs> when when they were testing Roundup, they said that, you might have to help me out on this, that its, it's mechanism is to sh shut off a- Shred the cell wall. Yeah, shred the cell wall of pests. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hmm. But the, it has the same effect in our microbiome. And so, you know, 20 years later, they they are now saying this and they are like, oh, yeah, I I guess that could do the same thing to your microbiome, your gut microbiome. <laughs> whoops. Whoops. Yeah, whoops is right. So, so it goes back to food, eating the cleanest food possible, maintain your gut microbiome. Uh, is great for your mental health on a physical level on a physical level yeah you gotta take take care of that three pound ball of fat in your head <laughs> <laughs> so uh what do you want to plug dylan do you remember all your lines <laughs> <laughs> ash is uh waving her hand like yeah yeah, so, uh, yeah, again, my name is Dylan Schnazy. Uh, I'm with uh, our film, family business, Study Presence, and we are here to build community through our farm events, our doula and postpartum nutrition care, and our Airbnb events. Come out and stay with us in the country for a couple nights and leave the kids with grandma. There. Steady presence. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, I just, I, I, I'm just playing around with the, with the scroller ticker, I guess. So, uh, I, and I am Matt from Farm Hop Life. You can find us everywhere. I'll have links in the show notes. Farmhoplife.com. Check us out. Thanks for being here, Dylan. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Thanks uh, for having me again, Matt. Yeah, you're welcome. Let's just hold on one second. And thank you, everybody for listening and watching. I appreciate you too. See you later. <laughs>